To compare and contrast what's going on with Stellar Blade right now, we have SNK, one of the OGs in the video game business. SNK, the minds behind, you know, the Neo Geo from, you know, just shout out to my old retro heads that are out there. You know what we're going to be talking about. And then, of course, King of Fighters, Metal Slug, like, you know, they used to be one of the big players in the late 90s, but it's been a minute. And I also didn't realize that SNK is owned by a royal family in Saudi Arabia. Habibi! Keeping it straight with this. Okay, so SNK's Royal Saudi Arabian owners or aims to have the King of Fighters developer retain its Japanese identity. <gasps> Wait, what? I want it to once again be as bright and soaring around the world as it was in the 1990s. Shout out to that because I'll keep it straight. Like there's been there's been a bit of a resurgence when it comes to fighting games. Like within the past 18 months, you had all three of the big boys release a brand new installment in the franchise. You had Mortal Kombat 1, which is probably lagging behind the other two. Tekken 8's receiving you know pretty good applause right now but of course some of the shine is coming off of it and the honeymoon phase is very much over but street fighter 6 is kind of coming out the other side of that and well for as much as capcom is trying to tank any goodwill that they have especially with what they did with dragon's dogma 2 and then of course overcharging for skins for uh, street fighter 6 there's a lot of focus on fighting games right now so if king of fighters comes in and just simply does something good like runs it back to kof that's the one that everybody likes. 14? Like 04 and 14, right? Uh, the, those are the big ones. And then, of course, you know, as bright as they were in the 1990s, okay? And they also leverage, yes, my Shiranui. As long as they don't DOA their character design, which, why did they do I used to love the DOA series because they had Rhea Hayabusa. They had a really good cast of characters that were over there with, you know, all of the chicks as well. You had the Tina and her dad. Dad was a big biker. And then what was it? Six with all of their microtransactions completely and totally killed the biz. Kind of sucks. And as much as I'm not a fan of 3D fighters, that was my jam. I had ultimate and that was the uh, one and two for xbox they were great games they were great games but king of fighters it, it always had that perception that that was you know that was the that was a fighting games fan fi fighting game for the fighting game fan that was big business back in the cut so of course according to the current company owner saudi arabian crown prince mohammed bin salman uh rather than attempting to change the core culture of the king of fighter series developer snk to appease foreign audiences he believes the key to the company's future success is to keep it true to its original japanese identity which is exactly what the gaming industry loves right now as long as you keep it true to your vision you don't capitulate to a bunch of weirdos who aren't going to play your game or are just generally disposed to not like your game guess what the audience is going to appreciate that and guess guess what they're also going to give you the benefit of the doubt something that most major corporations aren't receiving right now take a look at disney's releases okay unless it's some big tentpole event like deadpool and wolverine they take a look at the modern Mar the modern Marvel fair. Do you think people are going to turn out the same way that they did or are going to for Deadpool and Wolverine? You think they're going to carry on that same enthusiasm for when Captain Black Falcon America Man hits theaters in February of 2025? Yeah, exactly. Just take a look at the ticket stub receipts for the likes of the Marvels and Ant-Man from 2023. The only reason Guardians of the Galaxy did any good is because James Gunn's name was plastered all over the top of it, letting the audience know that it's going to be a continuation of two of the best films from the MCU, and it's going to be the swan song. So yeah, when you separate something from the rest of the herd like that, where it's going to be authentic, where it's going to be, oh, guess what? The identity and the vision of the creator, not of the studio, not being adapted for modern audiences, you end up engendering goodwill. You end up having the most profitable film from your release schedule. When you carry the same thing over to the video game space, like for as much as I have my theories on Stellar Blade, there were conversations and there were interviews that were given by the director of the studio of Shift Up, I forget the guy's name, the Korean fellow. He was not going to bend, break, or fold to any of the game's journalists who were screaming from the rooftops about Eve's design. Didn't change Eve's design. Now, what they did with the costumes in the aftermath, well, I think that that's kind of controlled marketing in order to try to uh, drum up controversy and seems to be working one way or another. People gave it a generally favorable benefit of the doubt and that's apparently what snk is going to be doing under their well saudi arabian leadership which is 
So strange. So strange. His, uh, the opinion of His Royal Highness, who took 100% share ownership of the developer after it was purchased in 2022 by nonprofit Misk Foundation, was first divulged to the public courtesy of SNK's current CEO, Kenji Matsubara, amidst a presentation regarding SNK's current operations given during a recent 2024 Games Creator Conference. Matsubara recalled a machine translated by Deep L. Okay, a conversation he had with Sir Bin Salam regarding his plans to the company's future all right releasing another king of fighters uh, oh yeah fatal fury oh yeah city of wolves is coming out oh next year right right early next year that's good and that one's actually looking pretty good i've seen a couple of previews of that anyways according to ceo uh, when pressed as to whether he would like to move snk to saudi arabia and make it bigger or develop more and more games using snk's ips in the united States or the u.s and europe uh, the crown prince reportedly assured in turn <laughs> i want snk to grow as a japanese his company. I want it to once again be as bright and soaring around the world as it was in the 90s. To this end, as per a recap of the panel provided by Japanese video game development news outlet to game makers, Sir Bin Salam added that he intended to do everything that he could to help the company achieve this goal. Yeah, and exactly. You need anything financially speaking? You want to talk, uh, you want to talk somebody who has endlessly deep pockets? I mean, come on, you know family of Saudi Arabia. I mean, come on, man. Uh, notably, uh, this uh, this approach to letting SNK keep on keeping on is not a new one from Sir Bin Salam. Okay, cool. Asked about the U.S. game a news outlet Video Game Chronicle following their acquisition by the Misk Foundation as to how the future... Uh, influence the crown prince in a Saudi Arabian background would have on the company's operations. Current King of Fighters series producer Yatsuyuki Oda explained, For us, uh, we're just focusing on making games. We're not a political company or anything like that, so it doesn't affect us in any way. Well, that's fantastic. And of course, staying over in Japan, that's a big W in general, because simply compare and contrast the Indo-Pacific output in the games industry. What do you have over there? My personal favorite and something I'll shout out once again. You already know where I'm going with this one. Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth developed in studio I'm sorry developed within the company of Square Enix Japan doesn't have any of the tating of Western influences Stellar Blade of course created and developed in Korea Capcom doing their stuff on Japanese shores just some of their business practices are quite predatory from soft I think from soft from Japan okay and those are some of the most celebrated studios putting out some of the most celebrated games right now and compare and contrast that to what's coming out of the west and well hey who who remembers starfield anyways it has uh, no no effect on our creative output uh, oda detailed uh, we have full freedom on what we want to create Further denying that their identity would be altered due to their new ownership, Oda added, One thing we would say is our ownership is generally fans of the IP. Hey, there we go. Uh, they have been forever. So it's up to what we want to do as far as creating content goes. Exactly. And that's something that's incredibly different, okay? Because now you have, or at least you've had for a while, and you can take this out of the context of video games, you have companies, you have people that are just simply buying IPs because they think that, yeah, it's profitable. And then they don't care what they do with it and then they just outsource it to people that actually don't care about the product. I think the perfect example right now is what's going on with Star Wars. You have people working on products for Star Wars in-house at Disney that have never seen Star Wars, that don't like Star Wars. You have video games getting outsourced to Ubisoft that are doing all of the worst Ubisoft things that they can possibly think of to their upcoming game, making it a $120 release to go to uh, Jabba the Hutt's iconic palace. Something that they made central to their marketing. So in order to get the full experience of the game, you have to shell out another, what, $40 on top of what you are ready for doing for a full price of the game. That's, that, that's Western developers for you. Meanwhile, you have a Middle Easterner who's in control of a Eastern legendary Japanese company. Just simply saying, no, 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 you guys just keep on keeping on. Let's return to the halcyon days of the 90s. I will provide you with whatever you need. Just do what made you successful to begin with. Such a strange, such a departure in development tactics, which... As we can see, one of those strategies is working and the other one is leading to the precipitous collapse of the AAA industry. I'll allow you to decide what you think is a better strategy. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.